This is a scene that many of us take for granted, but for the people here in Erbil, this shopping mall is something they're very proud of. Just over 300 kilometers away from Iraq's capital, but a world away when it comes to people's lives. Until six or seven years ago, there was no more to go to here. Now these people are walking around Iraq's biggest shopping center, with yet more being built. Erbil is going through a construction boom. Speak to people here, and they're at pains to say how different their lives are compared with the rest of the country. Everyone knows Kurdistan's economy is going well and going to get even better. Kurdistan is improving all the time. God willing, we have educated people, and that will only increase. Iraqi Kurds don't want to look back. Talk here is firmly about the future, with a fifth of Iraq's oil reserves and, unlike the rest of the country, a stable security situation, the regional government has allowed the economy to open up. And according to experts, the watershed moment for business here was the 2006 investment law. It gives a lot of ben uh, incentives to foreign investors coming, even local investors, in terms of you know, a tax-free period of five to ten years. Uh, um, uh, repatriation of the profit, being able to hire uh, foreign workers, uh, and so many other factors. Even uh, for the strategic projects, they give uh, a piece of land for free, which I, don't, I haven't heard it to, <laughs> that to happen anywhere in the world. These incentives have helped to reconstruct after war. In a country where oil exports account for 90% of government revenue, other industries are needed not just to provide jobs, but to make the raw materials for rebuilding damaged infrastructure and roads. Steel is a good example of how Kurdistan's investment laws are encouraging the move away from oil. It's also a very good example of how successful the city of Erbil is. 50% of the steel made at this factory is destined for the city of Erbil, with 50% going across the rest of Iraq. Turkey is one of the biggest investors in Iraqi Kurdistan. They were among the first to enter, and they've been the ones who've seen the paybacks too. For this steel company, the foreign know-how is crucial. 35 years ago, there was only one company in Basra and in Kurdistan. There were no companies or universities specializing in this type of engineering. There is only one reason why we brought over a foreign company to work with us. That's because we benefit from their technology. The company has all the technology and background in this area. Without that, we couldn't be successful. With more ambitious infrastructure projects coming up, local investors here want to move away from their strongest ties with Turkey and instead convince European businesses to come to Kurdistan. Over the next eight years, investment in Kurdistan will rise from $30 million to $150 million. Can Turkey do this? Can Iran do this? We have projects like the train, the metro. Those cannot be done by Turkey. They are already bringing foreign companies to their own country to build projects for themselves. And we think our mega projects cannot be done by Turkish companies. So we are going to Europe, Germany and Holland, for example, countries that are well known for infrastructure projects. Abil and the surrounding region's success isn't without its stumbling blocks. There's a growing divide between Baghdad in the south and Iraqi Kurdistan in the north. The country's budget was delayed because of arguments over oil rights, and there's a sense here of being held back by the rest of Iraq. The federal government is not happy with the level of the constitutional uh, rights that the KRG had. Uh, so they're uh, doing uh, all, everything in power to, how to curb that level of freedom and ability in all areas, by the, by the way. It's polit politics, economics, business, and area. And what the KRG does is actually <laughs> keeping those rights and uh, building on that. It, so this, uh, which um, uh, I don't know why, there is not, uh, because I don't think, I, 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 think I, I strongly believe a strong KRG means a strong Iraq. A more prosperous KRG means a more prosperous Iraq, if you look at it this way. But you need to um, break with the history of Iraq, which has focused so, for so long on the centralism, you know, one person, one government, one institution, uh, controlling everything across Iraq, which is, by the way, out of date now. <laughs> it's not stopping the government here, though. The economic transformation of a region that was previously very isolated has surprised many. And the man in charge of drumming up investment in the region explained to me where Kurdistan had got his ideas from. We've tried to avoid copy and paste of models. 
and we've tried to use experiences from successful stories like uh, Gulf, uh, specifically Dubai, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Lebanon, uh, other areas like Malaysia, Europe. So we've considered the environment and the culture and the nature that this society has been suffering and the way that this society needs to be rebuilt. Uh, based on these, we have tried to create a model of investment that fits the region itself. A lot of the headlines coming out of Iraq aren't particularly good ones. You've got security issues, safety um, and corruption. So when you're trying to attract investors to come and set up here, how do you convince them? We believe that and we are working on that very strongly that we are a very important part of Iraq. But we cannot accept that Kurdistan could be taken as one package security with the entire Iraq. The facts on the ground gives you indication that uh, there is no way to compare between the security stability in Kurdistan and, unfortunately, at the rest of Iraq. Regarding the corruption and the transparency measures, of course, uh, again, we are a part of one country. Yes, we admit that there might be corruption, but there are also willingness and power to overcome and to fight it. We have stepped out towards more transparent and uh, auditable uh, decision making. It's 10 years since the US led invasion and Kurdistan has changed dramatically. Where do you see the next 10 years? We have a vision that uh, some of our thoughts, some of our visionary messages to be seen on the reality when we say that we need to make of Kurdistan as a hub for living together, a new model for democracy, a model that can be respecting human rights, um, different voices and different ideas, work together as a package to uh, overcome uh, misuse of the resources and to have a human resource development strategy that can make the best use of the uh, natural resources that this country has.